Hi, and welcome to this introduction to DC++, a client for the Direct Connect network. I am Frederick Kellner, and in this video I will go through downloading, installing, configurating, and finally running DC++. We first need to download DC++. Open up your browser, go to a search engine, and type in DC++. When you are looking at the search results, Make sure that you go through the official DC++ website. Verify that any address that you use point to SourceForge. When you are on the official website, you can simply click Download DC++ as shown here. Your browser will ask you if you want to run or save the file. It is a good idea to save the file if you want to reinstall DC++ later on. We run the installer file and get prompted to verify that we indeed want to run this file. Make sure that you have administration rights and get permission to install DC++. When the DC++ installer starts, you are prompted with a dialog to choose the language that you want to use for the installation process. The next page describes what license DC++ uses. Make sure that you read through the entire license agreement before agreeing. The next page allow you to select which components to install. The first item is DC++ itself, which is required. The second is whether you want to have country information for other users, and the other should be self-explanatory. The next page allows you to select the location where DC++ should be installed in. When you are satisfied with your options, simply click Install to begin the installation process. Press close when the process is completed. We start DC++ by locating the shortcut on the start menu and starting DC++. When DC++ has started, we are prompted with the settings dialog and the DC++ help file. The help file can explain direct connect as well as settings, terminology and frequently asked questions. The help file can always be reached by clicking on the help button. DC++ only require one setting to function, the nickname or handle that you will use on Direct Connect. DC++ will automatically try and detect the best possible connection for you, but may sometimes fail. The passive mode should only be used as a last resort. I will however use it in this video to quickly show you downloading and searching. You can select the location where DC++ should, by default, store downloaded files. You can select the directories where you have content that you want to share with others. When you have done the basic settings, click OK and you can get started using DC++. Now we need to find some hubs to connect to. We open up the public hubs window, either via the view menu or by clicking on the toolbar. DC++ will then download a hub list and present all the hubs that it has. You can also select to download a different hub list. When the hub list has been downloaded, you can go through the different hubs to see which hub may suit your interest. Click on the different tabs to sort according to amount of users, etc. Either double click or right click the hub you want to connect to. When you log in, you are usually greeted with some message and possibly rules that apply to this hub. To write to everyone in the hub, you can simply write in the text field and send the message by pressing enter. 
This message will then appear to everyone else as well. The user list on the right side are other people in different countries all around the world. All of these people have something to share, as you can see on the Shared tab. To connect to someone, you can either double-click them in the user list or by right-clicking and select Get File List. DC++ will then proceed to download the user's file list and enabling you to see what they have shared. You can then browse the file list for files you want. When you have found a directory or file you want to download, double-click the item or right-click and select Download. DC++ will then proceed to download the file or directory, as you can see in the bottom window. You can also see the speed and when the file will be downloaded. You will also see any uploads from you. To search for files, open the search window and enter a search term and select restraints on what results you want. For example, if you only want audio files or video files. To see if we are indeed able to search, I will enter a search term I know will get results, which is the file we are downloading. To download a file, double-click or right-click and select Download. Since we are already downloading this file, DC++ will automatically add all others as source for this file. We can see what files we have queued up by going to the Download queue, either via menu or the toolbar. To remove a file from the queue, right-click and select Remove. You can also use the delete key on your keyboard. Confirm that you want to remove the file. At this point you have learned how to download files and search with DC++. There are many settings, views and aspects of DC++ that are not covered by this video, but you should be able to manage at least the basic functionality by now. If you get into any trouble, you can always check the documentation write on the help center or indeed ask others in the hubs you are in.